Good morning everyone. I hope you're keeping safe and keeping well. Welcome to our online worship this Sunday. Wherever you are, whether you're watching with your family or sitting alone, our prayer is that you'll be very aware of God's presence as you meet with us. Jesus said to his followers, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. So be encouraged. Although we're not meeting in our usual building, our God, the creator of heaven and earth, can work through YouTube just as easily. Our theme today is how God can find us in the everyday things of life. And Steve will be along shortly to unpack that for us. So as we come to worship, let's focus our thoughts using these words. Please respond with the words that are in bold text. Come, let us give thanks for this new day. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us worship our God, the maker of heaven and earth. Though we are separate, we are together in his presence. Come, let us bring our praises to the King of Kings, for he alone is worthy to receive honour and blessing. Come, let us open our hearts to receive from him, as, as we, we open his word, which lights up our path. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord, all his people. So I invite you to bow your heads as we pray together. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this new day that you have made. Despite the difficulties we're going through at the moment, we are grateful for the chance to gather together digitally and praise your name. When we stop and think, we have so much to be grateful for, so we thank you for our friends, family and fellowship, for answered prayer, for those who have gone the extra mile for our well-being and for your faithful promises which sustain us through thick and thin. Bless our time together, Lord, as we meet in our homes, joined by your Spirit and linked by our devices. We thank you that you have inspired and guided Steve as he has prepared your message for us. And we just pray that the words we will hear will settle deep in our hearts and that you will teach us more about how you find us in the everyday things of life. We bring our prayer in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hi guys. Who likes surprises? Come on, give us your surprised face. I was going to say that I love surprises, but I guess it depends on what sort of surprises they are. I don't like the surprises like falling off my bike like I did the other week, or not being able to go and visit my friends and family. I don't like this coronavirus surprise. But other surprises, I like those. Things like chocolates and ice cream, friends coming to visit, flowers, fun times together with my family. Those are great surprises. The Bible story we're learning about today is about a man called Moses. You've probably heard about him before. But he was out one day minding his own business, looking after his father-in-law's sheep, when he saw something very surprising. A bush. I know, I know, bushes aren't surprising. But this one was. You see, it was on fire. And not only that, it was getting burnt off. That is surprising. And then Moses heard a voice and there was nobody there. The vow voice spoke his name and told him to take his shoes off and told him all about what was going to happen to Israel. It was God. I wonder how you'd have felt if you'd been there instead of Moses. I'd have been really surprised. Fires that don't burn things up. Things like that. They're really surprising. They're more than surprising. They're impossible. Have you ever found something that you thought was impossible? I know some things are really, really hard, like trying to get the lid off a, off a really tight jar. 
Sometimes we need a bit of help. Then we can succeed. But on our own, we can't do it. And that's the thing about God. You see, he's really, really strong. And he loves us so much. There's nothing that he can't do. There can be lots of things that we find difficult. Things like loving our enemies, forgiving people who've been unkind to us. Those things we can't do on our own. We need to ask God to help us. At the moment, there are lots of strange things happening. People getting sick, no school, no shopping, no birthday parties. Sorry, Steve, you'll have to wait. We might feel a bit worried when we think about those things and, um, and things might seem really impossible. We might feel that everything's going wrong, but we can turn to God and ask him to help us. If you go on the CPBC website, there's a picture of a bush that you could colour in. Or perhaps you could go in the garden and collect some twigs and make your own picture or your own pretend fire. Perhaps you could stick on some flame shapes. And on those shapes you could write some other things that you find really hard. Things that are worrying you at the moment. Things that seem impossible. On your own or with a grown-up, with your mum and dad, with a friend in the house, you could pray about those things to God and ask God to deal with them. That's the great thing about God. He's really, really surprising. He can do the impossible. We're now going to sing one of my favourite songs. It declares how great our God is. It speaks of all that he's created and it mentions the birds singing sweetly in the trees and the stars in the sky, things that we can still do even in lockdown. So please join us as we lead you in singing How Great Thou Art. can take it in. That 
sits on the cross, my burden gladly bearing. He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to Thee. How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then shall I bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, I say, I've been reading the Easter story, as we all have, the Garden of Gethsemane. Four points, four points, very important. Jesus goes to a place that he knows. We're in our homes, we know our homes. He has three friends with him. We're now in a place where we have our friends, our household. He prays and we pray, but he focuses on the goodness of God. That's the first thing that he does. We should be doing that. And then he dares to be vulnerable. He opens himself to his father. I think we should do that. We do that now. That's how we face COVID-19. God bless. In his book, When God Whispers Your Name, Max Licado tells a story about a man named Hank. Hank's a cleaner who cleans offices in the middle of the night when there's no staff around. And, and the premise of the story is that one night, very early in the hours of the morning, as he was mopping the floor, he heard this voice calling his name, Hank, Hank. He looked up, but, but there was nobody around, and so he just carried on cleaning. And, and eventually he heard that voice calling again, Hank, Hank. And he, and he worked out that this voice was coming to him from his bucket. The water was glowing red and bubbling and this voice was telling him to come near and take off his shoes and his baseball cap because he was standing on holy ground. And it was at that point that this voice introduced himself. It was God. Do you think that's a weird story? What if I were to tell you it was true? I've changed the name, the location and I've swapped a bush for a bucket. But that's really the story of Moses when he encountered God. Let's read the story from Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to Moses, God called from him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. 
Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Heritites, Hivites and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And before we uh, listen to Steve as he unpacks this story for us, we're just going to quickly pray. So let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful story of your encounter with Moses in the desert. Help us, Lord, to understand what you have to say to us through Steve as we listen in a moment. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning we're starting a new short series where today and then in the coming next three weeks, I want us to think about the lessons that we learn from Moses' encounter with God at the burning bush. I want to say what lessons are there for our lives about how we encounter God during lockdown. And so the title that I've given for today is this, Encountering God in the Mundane. You see, Hank in our story, he was just doing his ordinary job, wasn't he, when he encountered God. Likewise, in that reading, Moses is going about his daily work when he encounters God. He was looking after Jethro's sheep. When he came across this burning bush, although it was on fire, it did not consume it. The fire did not consume it. And as I said, it was there that he heard God's voice speaking to him. It's there that he encountered God. And that encounter was to be something that would change his life. I wonder, where do you expect to meet with God? Most of you would probably say, well, we gather as a church. But what about in the ordinary, everyday, mundane things of your life? You know, as we look through the Bible, God is always meeting people as they do their mundane. Moses isn't the only person that this happens to. And Pat's going to read to us about another occasion. Now in this same district, there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch through the night over their flock, when suddenly there stood before them an angel of the Lord, and the splendour of the Lord shone round them, and they were terror-struck. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, I have good news for you. There is great joy coming to the whole people. Today, in the city of David, a deliverer has been born to you, the Messiah, the Lord, and this is the sign. You will find the baby lying all wrapped up in a manger. And all at once there was with the angel a great company of the heavenly host, singing the praises of God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth his peace for men on whom his favour rests. May God add his blessing to his word. The common thread between the shepherds and Moses is not the sheep, but it's God entering into somebody's ordinary, everyday stuff. Shepherds are just sitting on a hillside. They're doing what they always did. Heaven breaks out and tells them of the birth of Jesus. God breaks into their mundane and life for them is never going to be the same again. Do you know over the last three weeks or so of lockdown, for most people, life has changed. We feel cut off from others and some will even say they feel cut off from God. I've been a bit cheeky when I ring people. 
one of the questions I ask them is a little bit tongue in cheek. Have you been anywhere nice recently? Because I know full well that most of our people haven't been anywhere. And because of that, every day probably kind of feels the same. Hard to tell which day of the week it is sometimes, isn't it? In the Mance, over the last three or so weeks, there's been quite a lot of massive change that's gone on. Not all my handiwork, I have to say. So the three garden sheds, they've been cleaned and sorted. My office has been decluttered. The car has been washed. Maxine's painted the downstairs toilet and the upstairs bathroom. Daniel's decorated his bedroom. There's not a lot of jobs, if you like, left to do. There's a number of things that we're still considering because of lockdown. And one of those is the self haircut. But generally speaking, we're in a kind of routine. Life is kind of ordinary, mundane, and it follows the same rhythm week after week. If you're like us, let me ask you, do you expect to experience God in your mundane? Our answer ought to be yes. Because experiencing God in the mundane isn't just that of Moses and of the shepherds at the birth of Jesus. Over and over again in the Bible, there's story after story after story. There's Joseph in Genesis chapter 40, where he meets with God while he's in prison. There's Gideon on the threshing floor in Judges 6 verse 11. There's Elisha who's ploughing a field in 1 Kings 19 verse 19. Last week we thought about the road to Emmaus and the two disciples who simply met God in the sitting down and eating of a meal. Billy Graham, he will often talk about how he really encountered God once on the golf course, which is a good excuse to keep playing, isn't it? Every one of those people in their mundane, in their ordinary, in their everyday task of their lives encountered God and for every one of them their lives were transformed forever because of that encounter. So this week, can God speak to you? Yes he can. It might be in the queue outside the supermarket as you think about God's provision for your needs. It might be that on a Thursday as you're standing outside your house or at your window and you're clapping NHS and key workers that you're thinking about unconditional love. It might be just simply as you're standing at the cooker or as you're typing something on your keyboard or if you're getting breathless on your exercise machine or if you're walking in the garden or you're surfing Facebook and, and the internet. It might be as you telephone family, friends, neighbours or church members. Or even when you're listening to me again and again and again on the YouTube videos on our church page. In the mundane and in the ordinary of your life, God can speak to you and God will speak to you. And so our first thought as we come to the burning bush that I want you to take away from the experience of Moses is this. Expect God to speak to you through the unexpected. And expect God to break into your mundane and into your ordinary. Because the truth is, the pace of life has changed, hasn't it? It's been said that we can even hear the birds singing away more clearly. And so maybe if life is less hectic, and if we're prepared like Moses and like Hank to actually listen... Just maybe you'll hear God speaking clearer than you've ever heard him before. You see, God wants to speak into your life and he wants to speak into your daily routine. Bringing his help, his hope, his comfort and his strength. So let's pause for a moment. And just in silence, in your heart, just to ask God to speak to you. And after a moment of quiet and silence, Sheila will lead us in a prayer.
Great God, you are an ever-present help in times of trouble. And that's why we are praying now. We are troubled and we are worried. Things are going to get more troubling. This virus is spreading around the world. So many are seriously ill or will be seriously ill. So many healthcare systems are stretched or will be stretched. Be with frontline medical workers. Give them courage to do their work and keep them safe. Be with public health officials as they make decisions for the common good and politicians as they roll those decisions out. Help us to be kind to one another because anxiety can make us snappy. Help our communities to be resilient and expansive as we reach out to help all who are isolated and afraid. In these times of shutdowns and slowdowns, when travel is restricted or banned, as routines are disrupted and we spend less time together or more time together, help us zero in on what is essential. Thank you that love is also contagious and stronger than any virus. You will be with us and we will be with each other in sickness and in health. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to sing with us as we sing a song that reminds us that actually through the storms of life, through the ordinary, through the everyday thing, that we know God is with us. And as we kind of come to those things, those questions that we have in our wrestling, in our doubts, God is there being our strength and our help. So will you join with me as we come in worship with the song, My Lighthouse. In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea The silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my 
Thank you again for joining with us in our worship this morning. Some of us will gather again in a few moments on Zoom for an opportunity to carry on in prayer and conversation together. Others of you will see me again on Wednesday as we come to our communion service. But to interact with our Facebook pages or with the blog on our website, uh, share with us your prayer requests, your needs, share with us your stories uh, about how you are discovering and experiencing God in your everyday and in your mundane. And so I pray that God may bless you. Shall we share the words of the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.